in the other world we have to censor, we have to wear different clothes possibly, or you know, go a certain way. Here we are who we are, and everyone loves us for it. And the more we are who we are, we get more love for it. So there's just permission for us to shine and be and come forward and connect with our soul group. And what I'd like to see more at festivals and what I want to create more at my festival is the opportunity for councils to come together. So it's not so much of just kind of seeing and hearing and, and more intentional uh, focus around connecting people for the purposes of how are we going to work together to change lives and the new paradigm moving forward. So more intentionality of what we're trying to correct, do create as a group moving forward, especially in these times coming up when things are going to be rocking and rolling and we as a community are going to be there for each other and bond together to move forward in those times. I agree with all that and I, I think that a, a huge part of what makes these festivals transformational really is the sense of community. Uh, you know, we do a lot of work at large music festivals all over the world, you know, really big corporate ones and sometimes transformational ones. But the big corporate ones, what you're really seeing is like there's a big stage and really big artists and there's a, there's a fine line, there's a separation between the artists and the performers and the audience and the crowd. And at these festivals, uh, the artists and the people creating the stages and the structures and the people making the food and the people, you know, painting everywhere, they're all community. Nobody's like hanging out backstage, hiding out from the audience and the crowd. Like they're actually walking through the crowd and they're talking to people and they're hanging out. And it really provides... Uh, a huge, I mean, this is a community, like, and the community is growing, it's, it's massive, and I think that it's the sense of community that people don't get out there in the, the real world that is what's transforming, uh, transforming all of us, really. I think what I love most about these kinds of festivals is the sense of freedom that I feel, just the freedom to be and do in every moment, whatever I feel like. Well, when I'm not working at one. <laughs> oh, but even when I, I mean, it's an amazing environment to work at as well. It's amazing to work and be in this environment. But I think it's the freedom to dress the way you want and to roll around on the dance floor and to get involved in some interactive um, art. I love all that stuff and I think it's really special. I think that I would agree with um, with Deborah, that what I would love to see more of is more coming together and hearing your voices and spending time in some kind of interactive circle that involves more voices. And I think we're doing more and more of that. It's happening, and I think we can take it to another level so that you're in practice with a new dialogue that you can take out into the world. I think it would also be good for us to, to just start the dialogue of how do we take this back into the world and continue it always. Well, let's make that the next question then. How do we take this out back out into the world? What's the best way What's the best way? Because I think that's it's something we, we all are, as soon as we're cracked open, that's the next step, is how do we integrate this into our lives? So this can be something that we're living every day. Building man. Building man? <laughs> it's starting in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> building it and, and keeping it up. Oh, building it and keeping it up. I mean, that sounds amazing. We were just saying, like, it's, we should just leave all this stuff here. Like, let's just leave it here and just stay. Like, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I, I think I think it would be amazing to begin conversations in your own, you know, with your own friends and in 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 when you go back to your communities about starting intentional communities where we can live together. And it's happening. There are um, many different communities sprouting up that I've heard about in the US and in Europe where people are coming together. There's actually a talk this evening about Damanhur and that's an intentional community that was built in Italy. And I think tonight around 7, 
8.30 or 8.30, they're going to be talking about it down there. So if you're interested in learning how to build intentional community, they'll be talking about it. I think that's one great move. And the other great move is just saying yes to your impulses to be a little wilder and to be a little freer when you get out there. Just, you know, wear the crazy outfit. Do the crazy thing, you know. If we stop censoring ourselves, then they can't censor us. Well, I definitely think that, I mean, aside from having a festival that never ends, it would definitely be, you know, it's it's not an easy task to, to take this 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 energy and, and this vibe and what we have going on here at these festivals out into the real world. But uh, I've heard a lot of people say, a lot of people that come here for the first time say things like, everybody's so nice to each other and everybody's really open and you can just approach anybody and talk to people. It's the same way at Burning Man. Uh, somebody told me earlier today that they heard some young kids saying, dude, it's not really cool to be aggressive at this festival. You know, and like, you know, people are realizing it. And I, I think that one of the, one of the simplest things that we can do to, to help take this out into the real world is just when we go home, just keep the same energy and the same vibe and attitude and, and take care of each other and love each other and, and just continue that until the next time we all get to, you know, converge on, on a place at a transform, transformational festival. Uh, we just need to continue the way we feel here and take it home with us. I agree, if you really tune into your energy now, most everyone is so filled with love and inspiration and hope and good juju, and you go home with that. And it's really up to us to share it with our family, our neighbors, and those that didn't have the opportunity to come to the festival, because now we're charged up, and it's really up to spread it out like ripples, 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 ripples that come from this point here that go out through the universe. And that's really what happens. And I also agree the community is really the next stage. I mean, it's on everyone's tip of the tongue. Everyone has a role in the community. All those communities are forming. So that's really going to be what's happening in the next 10 to 20 years is having these communities form all over so that we can live and be and, and do this whenever and not have to tear it down. It's a beautiful thing that we work so hard to do. Yeah, when we're here in this space, we're so open and receptive to each other, to new ideas, and we reflect, we reflect so beautifully off of each other. And I would say, don't tone that down when you go home. And just walk into the world in your shining self, and don't be afraid to let that part of you show. Because if you keep that, if you don't, you know, don't wait for other people to be nice to you. Start being nicer to everybody else. Like, we're carry this attitude. Don't wait for the festival. Don't save it for an intentional community. Like, bring this into your everyday life. Bring this openness and this caring. Bring your compassion. Like, be it. Live it. Don't save it all for the festival. You know, just like Green was saying, wear something crazier. Just be a little more open. Be a little more compassionate with the people that you interact with every day. Don't wait for the special occasion, just make it your life. Um, um, so, I wanted to take advantage of having you on here to just gain your insights on the sustainability of these festivals as, you know, they're, they're this massive social economy that converges here. And, you know, Jesse, you were talking about just the number of co-creators. And, you know, a lot of these festivals, a typical ratio is a third, a quarter to a third of the participants are really active co-creators um, in making this happen. And so that's beautiful. On the one hand, um, you know, it creates this really dense, rich reality. Um, and then that's also a lot of comps, tickets. So uh, is there anything you could offer in terms of, you know, I, we see festivals kind of like struggle with their revenue model and all, everybody's looking for a, a revenue model that they can keep going. How do you make it work? Uh, I mean, as far as revenue models go, I think Burning Man's got to figure it out because everybody, everybody participates in Burning Man and nobody gets paid. Everybody just they bring their art to contribute to the community. But at the same time, you know, like Shrine, we built this temple, and, and uh, you know, Dream runs the Shigase and all the performers. And there's, there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of participants here. And 
they all are trying to make a living doing what they love. They're trying to make careers out of their art. So part of us, like, it costs a lot of money to put this on, and everybody needs some money in their pocket. But that, to me, like, that is, it's, it is sustainable because what we're doing is like, we are helping them sustain the community and keep these artists going and doing what they love so they don't have to get the nine to fives and, uh, you know, give up their dreams because they need to pay the rent. So it's, it's difficult and there is a balance. It is possible for a festival to do well, but also feel like everybody that's participating is getting taken care of at the same time. And there's like, there's like, there's It's kind of like that. It's layer of layer of uh, a lot of people's creativity and money and juice and energy. And I wish there was a consciousness shift that it's not just us here producing it for you, and we have a lot of people behind it, but you're also co-creating with us and can be part of the process of financing or giving or part of that. And that's how a lot of community festivals happen, is a lot of people in the community donate. Sometimes in the festival culture, what I hear is, how can I get a ticket for free? And um, unfortunately, that just tends to be a mindset that just is hard for me because I know how hard we work and how much we want to pay the people that help us. And when you get to a certain point, sometimes there's not enough money to go around. So I'm not sure how to shift that consciousness except for to keep bringing people in to be a part of the creation and know that it's really all of us that are creating this because you're just as much of creating this as we are and um, that we should all be in it together and, and see it as putting this on together. I think it's true it is a, a difficult part of the of the process is trying to figure out how to bring so much magic and so many artists and still make it make sense financially but I really love what Jesse said that the it, it makes it sustainable because we it's the artist when you come and you buy a ticket to the festival the money is going to so many artists for them to do what they love and continue doing what they love. And it is, you know, it is difficult for us because we throw a festival with our friends, for our friends, and it would be so amazing if we could just open the gates and have everyone come in and no one have to pay for anything. I mean, that would just be incredible. I would love to see that as a possibility. Maybe one day it will be a possibility somehow. But... The reality is that all this stuff does need to get paid for and all the artists that produce the art also deserve to make a living and support themselves. So um, thank you guys for buying tickets and coming to the festival. <laughs> well, it's very relevant in my own life too because how do I, how, I stumbled into this job. You know, I used to be just going to festivals. I, I went to my first festival in 2002, Boom Festival, and never imagined I would be sitting on a stage talking about festival culture now. And how how did it become just a hobby and a passion, and how is it now I'm supporting my lifestyle? You know, I struggle with it a lot because I don't make a lot of money doing this job, but yet I choose to keep doing it, and I choose I, I forego other options because this is what I love, this is what I want to do, but how do I make it sustain my own lifestyle? I just have to surrender a lot and just trust that I will be taken care of, that I'm doing the work that I feel called to do and that I love and that it's going to support me. Sometimes it's doubtful, sometimes I have questions about if it really will, but it always works out, so it is sustainable and as a way of life for me, I, I can't imagine doing anything else, so I'm really grateful for the material resources that it provides me so that I can keep doing this work. So it's sustainable on a personal level, too. Yeah, thank you all for sharing your insights. And I, I have one more final question, and that is, what is the greater story or mythology that these festivals 
KEMUDIAN DIBERIKAN KEMBALI KE KEMENTERIAN KESEHATAN